It's uh, 4 o'clock. I'd like to call to order the uh, June 4th meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Um, let me introduce our, our new member, our replacing staff of 11, who gave great service to this board for many years. We have Elaine Real, um, attorney in Northampton. Uh, welcome, Elaine. Uh, and just to refresh your memory, those of you who have been here before, uh, this is Brian Campidelli. I'm Bill Rosen. And we also have a uh, fairly new, although she was at the last meeting, our clerk, uh, Cindy Murphy. She works out of the mayor's office now, replacing our longtime clerk, um, Mary Maduro, who's gone on to work at the police department. So also welcome Cindy. So it's all new. Not all new. Um, we, um, as always, uh, are recording this meeting. Both audio and video recordings are being made. At this time, as is a custom at North Hampton Public Meetings, I'd like to ask if there's any public comment on any item uh, not on the agenda, or even any item on the agenda, although you might want to wait until we get to that uh, for, uh, for that piece. But if there's any public comment, uh, seeing none, uh, let me move on to uh, item number five. I see that Mr. Sewer is not here yet, so we'll just push this down a bit in the <coughs> Uh, in the agenda until he shows up. <coughs> Item number six, application for new seasonal wine and malt restaurant license, Mosaic Cafe. Who's manager, El Hafid Asad. <coughs> Tell us uh, what you plan to do at Mosaic. You've been operating as a restaurant, and this is the first time you've applied for yes, a uh, license to serve. Yes, sir. So tell us what your plans yeah, are. Yeah, I serve for many years, and to me, my customer asked me, you know, to get a license for real wine, to accompany with meal. Mm -hmm. That's why I made the decision, you know, to apply for it. Okay. So uh, you'd like a uh, seasonal wine and malt license. Yes. Uh, you know that that runs uh, with the blackout period, but then you can also pay extra fee to the city to convert it to year round. So that's already been explained to you. Yes, sir. <coughs> so um, your staff uh, or yourself, do you have experience in the service of alcohol to people? Yes, do you have tips training or service it training? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have it there. Okay. And, um, you're not changing anything else about the business? No. Okay, so it's still the same. It's the same. Still Thank you. Um, okay, uh, let me see. Uh, before we get to the 16C finding, I think we need, um, what else do we need to provide? Um, a business certificate from the city clerk's office. Do we have that? I see on the checklist here. Okay, should be. Okay, I just want to check what's the question. Oh, you know what? It's pending that. You're right. Because, okay. Um, yeah, I think we were. No, that one was okay because we asked about it and he not the day or anything, so we don't need it's that. It's okay. okay. Just waiting for the. Um, at this point, just waiting for the. The uh, certificate from the building commissioner? Right. No, this one. The first one. He, okay. he's got all these green cards. Right. <coughs> and so we, that was the only thing we had to make. Right. Yeah, I know. Because this, this happens after. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're just, we appear to just be waiting for a workers' compensation affidavit uh, for this. But other than that, routine matter, there's nothing else. Uh, do you have any questions, Brian? I do not. Uh, Elaine? Yeah. Um, we. Uh, this establishment is within 500 yards of a, um, of a church or a school, so we need a 16C finding um, that this is not... Um, did we get the cards back on Yeah, they okay. should. We seem to have gotten cards back from everybody. Uh, so we need a motion that this would not um, adversely impact any educational or religious institution nearby. Okay, motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, I'll take a motion to approve this. Uh, make a motion to approve <coughs> the uh, 
the season will uh, <coughs> wind them all this run. Mosaic, yeah. All second, Dan. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mr. Estelle. Do I need to sign the 16 C? Yeah, it's right. It's right. Yes. <coughs> So, um, as long as the workers' compensation affidavit comes yeah, into city, yeah, and then uh, after the ABCC approves this, the uh, uh, the fire lieutenant and building commissioner will just make an inspection. It's a different when you begin the service of alcohol; they're required to do that. But that will wait till after the ABCC approves our action here in Boston. Okay. okay thanks. Right, thank you. Good luck. Okay, um, oh, okay um, let me um, let me return um, to item number five. Uh, I see Mr. Tour is here. Uh, update regarding license um, uh, 004 annual alcohol what, restaurant license at 298 Main Street, Mr. Sewer. Good afternoon. So, as is our <coughs> custom, just like an update on the progress of uh, getting the uh, facility that you described earlier up and running? Yes. Um, so, I mean, we're moving as fast as we can move. I mean, we're clearly way behind in terms of the June date. Um, the inspectors have been through from the city. Um, our guys are working as diligently as we can, but it's, you know, it's an involved project. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not certain what else I can. Yeah, you said here, you said the last meeting you, the June right, we knew date, we were, the June date was. was I mean, the set, there's been a number of setbacks. Um, much of the time, issue has been based on the new building code, mm -hmm. and we've worked our way through just about all of those issues. There's still a few issues that they're working through, but um, you know, we're just about ready to start buttoning up the walls. Just about all of the wiring is finalized. Just about, and. Um, yeah, I mean, we're working as fast as we can work. I spoke to Louis Hasbro today just to get an update. Yes. Him. I understand there were a couple of inspections that should have happened a couple of days before, but they didn't. They didn't I wake up. I so. think, based on our job meeting today, I think those inspections happened yesterday. Okay. I believe yesterday, or there may have been one today. He wasn't sure. I think Dave was the guy that was going to go. Yes, up. I know that there was an inspector through yesterday. I think someone was through this morning as well. But um, okay. And I believe everything went fine with those inspections. All right. I think based on that, they're able to move another stage forward in terms of some of the wall work. Now you have two levels here at this place. Three levels. Three levels. Okay. But the service, the, the public would be on two of them, right? No, all of the levels. All of the levels? Yes, the entire facility including the exterior. When we first put in for the license, we didn't include anything, I don't believe, on the outside, but we will eventually come forward with what we're looking to do outside. But the, the interior, all three floors are going to be accessible and all three floors will be used by the public. And you have a sort of theater arrangement with a stage yes. where you could have the either shows or weddings, right? Exactly. Yeah, the, the first floor, if you will, not the lower level, will be a theater type seating, um, church type um, setting with a stage. Um, and we would utilize that for shows, for weddings, private events. Um, that leads into a separate bar area. Um, there's a separate backstage area on the back of the stage. and then the lowest level is built out for a reception hall um, or with a catering kitchen. Um, and the upper floor are offices, a separate private function room, um, separate bathrooms. None of the original plans that, that we've been working from have changed from the beginning. Those are all as as were submitted to the um, to the building inspector's office. And all of those plans that were submitted to the license commission nothing's changed these are the plans were submitted back to 2009 yes and the plans that were recently submitted again because we had to resubmit for the new building code and for the new building um for the building permit and all of those other than the code changes that we were we were required to make um in terms of construction changes all of that has been consistent with what the original intent was so there's nothing that's and no, nothing will change with that all of that's going to going to maintain you know stay the same um, all right, well, I have some thoughts about this project. When we have the first, let me ask uh, the other commissioners if they have any questions for Mr. Swift. I do, uh, I'll listen to your thoughts first. Um, 
my, my question is, I, I, I guess I'm hearing the June date is very speculative at, at best. Yeah, it was, you know, when we when we first came in front of the board again, where those dates were were um, were requested, um, the the issue was we were just getting a new building permit because the previous building permit had expired, and the construction code, the addition of the code had changed, and that code change did uh, require us to do certain things different than what some of the work that had already commenced. And so some of that, including some plumbing changes, was was fairly drastic. And um, and when well, we got, let me, uh, I just want I just have one sure. sort of central question. Today, uh, standing before us, um, uh, can you give us what you would characterize as a firm date? I would love to give you a firm date, but I want to be careful in terms of it being real firm. I, you know, we're working diligently in the hopes that we can get everything up and running, so we're open by winter, you know, by, by late fall. I mean, we still have months to go. If you go there, there's a ton of stuff that's completed, but being realistic about the amount of work that has to happen, there's still a lot of work that's left, that, uh, some of which is, is ongoing, but in terms of the balance, it's still going to be a number of months away. Okay, thank you. I'd love to hear your comments. Well, um, as we um, as we've said before here in these meetings, the commission has said these licenses should have been in operation. Um, we gave uh, the licensee a number of deadlines, and actually, and even before giving a deadline out, we received a number of assurances and, and dates. You know dates when, it, when this would be open. When we spoke in November, um, we um, talked about <coughs> a um, possible opening date for the church. And we, we, um, at that point, there was a question, well, should we, should we give this thing a couple more months to run and then, and then say it's not running, give a deadline of a couple of months? And the licensee argued that, no, he needed more time. And we eventually decided um, in that meeting to give him uh, almost seven months from, from that meeting to um, uh, complete the work. So now that deadline, you said you're not going to be able to make it. Um, and speaking with the building commissioner today, he acknowledged there were some things that had to be done, but that this place could be finished up. And, you know, if this were, if this were, um, if this were hurried up, you know, other places have been renovated in less time, and it wasn't as if you needed to demolish and build up again from the ground floor. So I would be inclined to give a, another deadline here, and this time, if it's not, the license, again, we have to we have to follow the law here, and uh, Section 77, Chapter 134, requires the license to be in operation, and uh, we would be within um, our, our um, be doing our duty as a commission to revoke the license if we deemed it to be uh, a pocket license in violation of Section 77. And um, I would like to say I hope from the beginning that this venture would be a success, that that church would be turned into something useful, that everything would go fine, that you would you would have all the success in the world, make tons of money from it. Um, but you know, time has passed, and, and here we are again. I am inclined to set another firm deadline, and um, not winter, uh, but I would, I would say myself that I think, um, again, we're letting another deadline go. We did say the end of June. You got to understand what that, right. but that we also what that, that does, yeah. what that does to us as a body, saying, okay, here's a deadline. Okay, we're going to let it slide. That being said. Right. You know, this this property is too valuable. I think, you know, the plans that you have uh, seem to benefit the city. So I would be inclined to let this deadline slide, much as I don't want to, and say that we would deem this a pocket license unless this thing were open again by October first. So I would just open that up then to comment from the other commissioners. Is that enough time? I mean, I, you know, I, I respect what you're saying, Bill, and I just want to be realistic about, about what this project was. It would have been easier for us, and it was the last thing I wanted to do, it would have been to knock this down and start from scratch. 
a heck of a lot easier. A heck of a lot easier, yeah. I mean, I brought some city officials through, and I, I made mention and, and, and the open invite for the commission, and I'd love to bring it through. This project, besides the fact that it's historical in nature in terms of what we started with as a structure, it is extremely difficult, not in just the basic construction and meeting the new construction code, but also in terms of what we want the end product to look like. And when you take a look at the amount of time, just based on some of the specific vendors that have to come in and some of the specific work that has to be done, you know, I would I would basically just ask that the understanding is that it's moving. The building inspector's office is coming through on a regular basis. And that I, I hate to see the firm deadline set where then everybody's boxed into a specific date. I, I'm happy to come every month and give you specific, as we discussed, timeline in terms of what's been done. The building inspector's office, I'm sure, with documentation as we've been doing, they've been in on a regular basis as well. Look, at, I want to get this place open. It's costing us a ton of money at this point, and we've got trades people that are there. We want to get it open and running. We've got people trying to book events. But no different than I'm telling the people trying to book the events, it's really hard because October 1 with summer and where we're at in the schedule is like tomorrow. I mean, just being realistic. It would be, with what's left to do there, being realistic about where we're at right now, it would be very, very difficult. So, that's... You're answering Brian's question. Yes. So well, you, Brian? I mean, I understand. I come from a construction background, and I know you have no control over things that are out of your control, especially with uh, uh, subs and things like that. So, with that being said, what, in your best opinion, would be a final year? We are trying really hard for the end of fall, but I'm concerned about no different than when people are trying to book events. I want to, I want to know that we're going to be able to open. When we did well, the Calvin, we set up a firm date. What's that? Let me ask you this question. You said the, is it the lower floor that has, um, what did you say, banquets? The, the lowest level is the kitchen level and a reception and a separate bar area. Can you open that earlier than the rest of the place well, and have a banquet? There's, you know, <laughs> I mean, I get you. trying to work with you, man. No, I understand. Uh, you know, that question falls, you know, in terms of an occupancy permit, because oftentimes they won't allow one area open. Um, you know, there's an elevator being installed. There's full fire systems that are, are integral to every floor. Um, listen, there's been partials that have been granted previous, but this is a fairly immense project. You know, it's 15,000 square feet, and, and every floor ties into the next floor. Who's acting as a GC on this project? Pioneer contractor, Dave Classic. Is there a way that he, does he have a um, timeline set up? We've had timelines set up. No, 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 I'm talking about on a schedule, like what I'm doing with the hotel and things like that. We get emailed daily, you know, our timelines when we start our job and yes. so on and, and so forth. And unfortunately that timeline, I guess what I'm trying to explain is, you know, right. a little different, although I think the hotel experienced a little bit of a delay for a period as well, now they're moving very fast. I think there's a few pieces that once we get those out of the way, things will begin to commence. You know, move, once that commences, things will begin to move quickly. Um, for instance, site work on the exterior is starting supposedly a week and a half from now. But if there's bad weather that hits, where they're delayed on the project that they're on, so then that could be delayed by however long it takes. So it's you know you know because you're in the business, and so it's. Look, at, I want to give a firm timeline. Is there a firm timeline that we have? Yes, but it's dependent on everything falling in place based on whether the exterior work, the interior work is reliant on a handful of subs specific to some of the trade. There's some specific stained glass pieces, thank goodness the majority of which is almost done. Um, most of that's been in storage for a while, but there's specific trades people, there's specific plaster people. It's not just hanging sheetrock, it's all curved walls, it's all curved dome ceilings. Um, so I mean, that's not, you're just running the day after. It would have been easier to, Correct. you know, but I wouldn't have done the project if it were, if it were a matter of turning it down. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind walking through. Yeah, yeah. I'd like, you know, I took some city folks through today. I'd like to bring it through because it'll give you yeah. a different understanding. It's not building a hotel room box. It's not building a storefront. Right. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. And once you see what's there, I think you'll have a different set of eyes as you view it because it's not, no one's sitting on their hands with this. It's, right. It's a lot of work and a lot of money, and it's a big project. And I, you know, and I know what it's going to mean for that section of the, of the city. And you know, I just beg your your understanding that it, you know, I, I don't want to get painted into a box where. And I appreciate the question: When are you going to be finished? Honestly, if I knew that, I would have 20 shows or 30 shows booked already. Right? What I was getting at with the Calvin 
That was more of a cosmetic renovation, and that took us a year just with what we did there. But we knew by May that we were going to be done by October because of what, what work we had to do. So we went ahead and booked the schedule. I'd love to be able to do that now, but I'm concerned that if I do that and we don't meet the date, we have a big issue. So, uh, you know, I would ask that, that you know, you, you come through, that you take a look, that once you do that, you'll see what's going on there. And, and, you know, I would ask that, I'm not looking for something three years from now, but I just, I know that we won't be done. I don't want to have to come in front of you in October and, and, and say, you know, we discussed it and this is where we are right now. You know, I think if you look at it, you'll have a much better understanding. So are you thinking November? Better. No, we're shooting to have everything done before the end of the year. I just can't give you a firm date. I'm not booking events because we don't know yet. I want to know that we're going to turn the key. We'll know as we get through summer what that final date is going to look like, but I can't. I personally would like to meet the GC when you bring me on there. Yes, he's their day. He's their daily, so I'm, I'm happy to do that. I agree to any kind of I think we all that Yeah, I'm happy to have you meet. I mean, we're there on a daily basis. So. There's people there every day? Yeah. Well, there's like there. that, unless there's a reason that they're not there, yes. Yeah. Meaning weather? Or you're uh, because meaning, they have the job yes. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a few sub dancing between the Smith College job, and then there's some things that we're waiting on if they wait on an inspection, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. okay. I really don't want to see you back here again. Thank you. Um, but I really have some deep concerns about our perception as an enforcement body. Mm -hmm. We already look, I think, kind of silly. I mean, this license has been out there since 2009, and I'm, I'm looking at this thing. Is this really your top priority? Have, have we, as a commission, as a body, made it clear that other businesses have the right to depend that when we give our word mm -hmm. and say this, this is a deadline? that they need to take it seriously. I'm not saying that they're oh, having a reversal. Oh, we're taking it seriously. I more than clear. Yes, more than clear. I, I'm, and this is not a, a judgment. This is simply asking. Um, you know, I noticed that it, that you have, have just uh, bought another property in town. So, of course, my first thought is, um, are some of these construction resources going to be diverted to another property? Is this really going to get the special sort of um, laser focus that we would hope. And I'm, I'm inclined because of all the years that have gone by and the fact that we have to look at other business people and say, you know, we're going to not set a special precedent. We're going to treat everybody equally. I, I really think we need um, to set a firm date. Uh, and, and I, and I, as I said, it's not a judgment. I think sure. you're, you're, you're trying. I think you're very motivated at this point in time, and um, I, I would just put that out to about my fellow members of the commission that I really I can, think that we need to set a firm date. If I can just comment on that, that sure. it, you know, there's properties that we purchase all the time. Yeah. yeah. That just happened to make the front page of the paper because it's here and because of the nature of what was purchased. We're not purchasing the nightclub. We purchased several buildings as an investment uh, purchase. We do that, you know, many months a year. Right, and, 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 that, I, and I'm, I'm not saying are, that that's going to have major construction. That's simply saying yes. no, there, there are going to be people. It confirms who look my at commitment that. to town, I think, more than anything, but it, it has no bearing on, on what we're doing to and, and how the construction is proceeding, or my time, or efforts. I mean, sure. We're taking this very seriously, trying to get it done because it's costing money every day that we're not open at this point. So I appreciate the comments. I just wanted to clarify that, that the resources are that are needed to know here are going there. Thank you. Uh, let me add one other thing which touches on something Brian talked about, a partial opening. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My conversation with Louis today, he it just sort of came up in the in the course of it that you could have a partial opening. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what that means in detail as far as him giving right. an occupancy permit, but it seemed to imply that this wasn't out of the realm of possibility, yeah. that you could in fact do that. Here's what we're interested in. Here's what we are supposed to do as a local licensing mm -hmm. authority. We grant liquor licenses. <coughs> we require people to follow the law. Right. One of the sections of the law is you operate the license. You don't keep it as a pocket mm -hmm. license. We've established right. Uh, from our city solicitor, and the reason why we revoked the license for 2628 Center Street was because we deemed it a pocket license. Mm -hmm. You are in danger of having the same thing done here, 
and it would certainly be within our power as local licensing authority to do the same thing with the church. If, you know, but we, we do make allowances, but we've been making allowances for years now. As, as uh, Elaine said, you know, we have to keep our deadlines. We, you know, nobody else is going to rely on, on, on anything we say if we don't do that. If there's, a, um, if there's a possibility of doing this, all we're interested in is this license be in operation, right. the service of alcohol be, be ongoing mm -hmm. as specified in Chapter uh, right. uh, 138. So if you have a possibility of doing that, do that. Now, that being said, mm -hmm. talking about deadline here and doing all this, well, the deadline's not upon us yet. This is June 4th, and we gave you a deadline later on. Right. So, the heavens could open up and you could get everything done in two weeks and open up. That's not happening, perhaps. But, you know, we can't assume that. Right. But at our July meeting, mm -hmm. you know, we will say, so we get a deadline in June. Is it opening? No. Right. He warned us that it wasn't opening. Okay. And I, at that time, yeah. and perhaps you will have had a chance to answer your questions, um, you know, at that time we can either say, well, you didn't meet the June deadline, we're revoking the license. Right. Or we can give you some more time, set another deadline, and say, well, that's it. Right. Well, that's the end of it. Right. And, and go forth from, forward from there. Right. So, uh, I, for one, wasn't prepared to make a decision. It's mean, because we're not at the June deadline. Right. It makes sense logically. And it gives you some time, gives you some time to get your questions answered. I so, think, that being said... I think that would be great to, for, to get some construction feedback, but I, I would like to just throw out for us to be thinking about. I, I could see November 1st as a firm deadline with with the stipulation that we ask Mr. Seward to discuss with the building commissioner, partial opening. You know, two drinks get served, I would feel that we were served legally. Well, yeah, but, but I mean, I don't want a nominal opening. No, no, you have to engage in the operation yeah, of the place. It's not... Yeah. A couple of people I come in, you sell the drink, and, I can and then you don't sell another drink for, for no, no, six no, months. No, Ongoing service at all. Obviously, I'm, I'm sorry <coughs> if I sound. Sorry I understand so the I'm, intent of what, and, and, and you know, I just, again, I want to be up here, be realistic, and not try to say, oh, absolutely, we can be open for October 1 and, and then have to come in front of you October 1 with my tail between my legs. And so I think, you know, we'll work towards. Whatever we need to work towards, but I just want to be realistic about it. It's, it's a different being there. It's not a it's not a, a four wall standard construction situation. Here's the here's the here's the thing. We have to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. You have several choices. I think I pointed out in the previous license. We have several choices. You can operate the license at the premises we already granted you license to operate them at, or you can. Um, you can sell it to somebody mm -hmm. else, yeah. uh, or you can transfer it to another property that you own. Okay, so that's it. I, we may have that deadline in place, mm -hmm. and you have those choices before you. Right. And you don't have to open there. You have to put in operation by a deadline that we set, license number um, 004. Right, that's the it. Realistic uh, ability to transfer, and then to have to transfer. I mean, I, I guess I'm. I hear what you're saying, but. You could, you could, again, you can operate it there. Right. You can give it back to the city. Right. You can trans, you can sell it to somebody else. Right. Somebody else who wants to open a bar right. or a restaurant, or you can transfer it to another property you own. Those are the four things you can do with a liquor license in the Commonwealth. Right. And we have to make sure that one of those is happening. Right. Under Section 77. Right. So we may give you a deadline that says have one of those things done. Mm -hmm by date certain and that's what we have to do otherwise we might you know we shouldn't be sitting here right. doing this that that is your obligation mm -hmm. as a license holder to put the license operation in operation it's our obligation to enforce this um, uh, statute you know under our authority right. so um, so we would uh, I'm sorry Len, so you would say we should have a we should have a you, you agree we should have a date set by the July meeting, or how would you like to proceed? I, I, I think uh, we're going to make this decision at the July meeting and that I certainly, at the very minimum, want a firm date. I just I think this is gone on far too long. Okay, and I agree. I, I also so want a firm date. Do you want me to reach out to the License Commission um, 
to set a date on how in terms of you if you want to come through. I don't know where if you want to take a look and report back. I don't know what yeah, I'll I mean, do with you there. Okay, so I can communicate sense. and find a, a date that makes sense for you and we can get you in the we can speak to the GC, et cetera. Okay, so you took other city officials through today. Yes, and they're building, you know, the inspector's office are them on a regular basis as yeah. well. They can, they can weigh in, yeah. of course, if they yeah. want. Yeah. It's an open process. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, how should I communicate with you? Follow your email? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah, again, the decision, the deadline has to reach. Okay, uh, moving on to item number seven in the agenda, and thank you for your patience. Application for transfer license uh, 033, annual hall alcohol restaurant, and transfer of common victory license number 171, and transfer entertainment license number 426, one bar and grill incorporated, uh, the former Tully O'Reilly's in the 11s. This is being uh, uh, transferred to one bar and grill. Is somebody here to speak to this? Okay. Uh, could you Hi. identify your own? Sure. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Drost. Um, I'm an attorney with Fitzgerald Attorneys at Law. And I'm here as counsel for One Bar and Grill Inc. And there's two shareholders who are here today, Matt Gibbs and Lauren um, Pomponio. Uh, Lauren and, and Matt have been involved in the um, uh, industry here in Northampton with uh, currently at Fitzwillies. They've had an opportunity to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with um, uh, Tully O'Reilly's, which uh, you know, their legal name is One Full Street Inc. And they plan on, um, uh, hopefully once approved, uh, establishing a new venture uh, at, the, at the location on One Full Street. That they're here for any questions that you may have. Describe, describe what the, I'm sorry, go ahead, Cindy. I'm the pledge is in here. The pledge document's right here. Okay. Um, uh, just describe um, oh, yes, I'm, what I'm the place, what, how the place, what the place will be, what's your Okay, concept. we're looking to do um, a bar grill on the, we'll call it side A, which is the Tully O'Reilly side, more of a, a bistro setting as opposed to um, the current setup. We will not have a dance floor. We'll have all high top tables there and concentrate as a bistro esque bar and grill, more of an emphasis on food. There will be no jukebox, no uh, live music on that side. That side will be entirely food and, and libation. On side B, the 11 side, we will continue with a similar format with bigger bands uh, than a lot of the. We'll still have some, a, a big foothold in the local music scene, but we will bring, uh, give an example, the first couple bands that we want to bring in. One is an Elton John cover band, the other is a Bon Jovi cover band. So that style of, of music that the city really doesn't have a quality venue to to showcase that. And that's, that's pretty much in a nutshell what we're looking to do is, you know, continue with the live music on the 11 side without... It, between both sides, there's no structural changes. We intend to remain closed for another month or two and renovate the entire building, both inside and some of the outside structure. Um, you know, basically paint and updates and things of that nature. So, but the biggest emphasis will be on more food, and that's kind of what we're going to hang our hat on. So when. Uh uh, when the 11 side is um, doesn't have a band, uh, patrons will still be served in there, or will it be just uh, um, shut off. In, initially, yeah. we're looking to only open it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from the get-go until until we provide seven days worth of entertainment there. Um, initially, I think that um, for financial reasons, I just think it's more beneficial in the summer with the air conditioning and the whole nine yards to concentrate on the weekend nights there. And then the rest of the week, we're going to concentrate as a bar and grill at the Tully side. And that, that's kind of our um, initial plan going forward is we don't want to become a seven-day music venture there. It just becomes too hard to accommodate that on a regular basis. So we'd like to concentrate all our efforts 
basically for weekend nights on the 11th side. Sounds reasonable. Um, Is that, I just want a point of clarification. So that means that the 11th side, whatever it's going to be called, um, will not be open usually Monday through Wednesday or Sunday? Initial, with our initial, Sunday, probably for the first year, I'm assuming, until we okay. can finally get a, a, a really good grasp on, you know, local bands that we can be financial, financial, financial excuse me, profitable, you know, financially booking. You know, a lot of, a lot of the times it's great to, to be a, a big part of the local music scene, but we have to think in, in forms of business. And, you know, initially the bigger bands, which may cost us a little more, generate a little more of, uh, a little more capital based on, you know, the, the demographic we're looking to hit. Um, you know, uh, time for other questions too, but I have a, one question about your entertainment license. Um, what is your, um, your proposal here? Um, do you have a proposed entertainment license word in this thing? I'm seeing the old license here. We're, um, we're, we were comfortable following the old guidelines. We have no intention of ever having DJ played music or anything of that nature. 21, boxes, 21 plus. 21 plus, okay. live music only. Um, okay, so the, uh, the terms of the existing entertainment are perfectly license. fine with us. We have zero intention of, of anything other than live music over there. All right. Uh, and I see that we have, oh, just tell me uh, briefly about your staff and who will be staff, who will be engaged in the service of alcohol. Lord Pomponio and myself will be the two on-hand managers. I currently am the general manager of Fitzwillies and the Toasted Owl. She's currently a bar manager, bartender at, at Toasted Owl. And um, you know, we have a very good grasp on the local scene and, and what to-dos and not-to-dos will happen. Between the two of us, functioning as managers on hand, that's pretty much what we're going to do. We're looking to hire a staff of about 30 people, um, with will consist of servers, cooks, bartenders. Um, we are both serve safe certified and tip certified. We will make it a point that our entire bar staff is also tip certified. Um, it's something in my past and my reputation hopefully precedes me a tad about the staff that I currently have at Fitzwillis and Toasted Owl where I don't think you can succeed as a business and succeed without liability unless you train your whole staff and have them all certified. So that, that's our outlook on, on how we're going to train our staff and who the staff members will be. Okay. Um, since you've been in service alcohol just across the street basically. Yes. You know, and you, you also worked at other places I before yes, Fitzwillis and Toasted Owl? Yes, sir. Um, one other question I have, and I'll ask the other commissioners to uh, ask questions too. Uh, you pledged the license, is that correct? Yes, we, we are putting a chunk of, of money down, and then we're financing a bunch through People's Bank of Holy okay. And as, as part of their loan agreement, they want to pledge the license. Okay, and we have all the pledge documents. Yes, we that. Okay. Um, uh, Brian, any questions? I don't know. Great. Okay. I'm looking forward to hearing the music. <coughs> All right. Put it as a service and put a transfer of the content of the music. Okay. And um, are we missing anything here that we need? Yeah, because they're still working on it, so they can mm -hmm. um, Once they're done. Heather actually, I spoke with her yesterday, and got to know that they're kind of at this point that we can do Okay, that. all right. We have, a, there's a number of things until they finish their renovations, the Board of Health and the occupancy program. We, we met with the building commissioner right. and fire department yesterday also, just to go over our plans, and we don't intend on changing the capacity or any structural changes, so you know, making sure that uh, we started a relationship with Lou and Larry from the Prairie State Fire Department it was kind of one of our goals. Okay, so if we, if we grant you the license, it would be um, in uh, uh, 
an expectation that we will pass all those things. Yes, so we'll condition the yeah, contingent, on, contingent on upon getting a valid passing all of them. Yeah, et cetera. Really, so. Occupancy permit and any required. So like <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll move that any vote to approve. No, no, just <coughs> move, move okay. the question. I guess <laughs> we don't need any. We, this is the only thing we need. We need three things. We need to approve the. Uh, we need to do these separately. Uh, the transfer of um, the uh, the license. Um, and approval of the proposed manager, so that could be one. <coughs> we need to approve the transfer of the common VIC license, and we need to approve the uh, transfer of the entertainment license, and the entertainment license would follow the um, the current conditions on the entertainment license 426, which is now attached to the property. So. Right. Okay. 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 I'll tell you what, make this easy. Let me, I'll make a motion that we approve the pledge of license uh, by the applicant uh, for this li for this license. Uh, any second on that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, do I make a motion then to? I'm going to leave it in your capable hands. Sorry. Not a newbie on the board. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this one's more complicated. Than All right. Then uh, I'll make a motion. We approve transfer of license 033 uh, and all alcohol restaurant license to. Um, uh, one Bar and Grill Incorporated uh, from One Pearl Street uh, Incorporated, um, contingent upon receipt from the Building Commissioner, the Board of Health, and other city bodies, the BPW, um, that they passed all the required inspections. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll move we approve the transfer of the Common Vic License, um, uh, number 171, uh, to the same people. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then uh, the last thing, transfer the entertainment license 426. Again, if your entertainment license um, uh, now specifies that, as, as we've discussed now, there is a um, restriction on, on DJs. Um, there is um, uh, a restriction to 21 plus shows only. And um, the, um, there's a restriction for Commonwealth on Sunday entertainment, and you know what that is, uh, one, between 1 and 2 a.m. Um, do you also, uh, one question occurs to me too, um, let me take the entertainment license first. So I'll move approve the entertainment license um, for um, one bar and grill incorporated under the same conditions as opposed to the previous license. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, question about the um, uh, 2 a.m. closing. You know the special rules, of course. Uh, do, you, do you intend to have 2 a.m. closings, or do you want to uh, comply with only the 1 a.m. closing? Um, we'd like the 2 a.m. closing and, yeah. you know, Comply with the same rules okay. that, that apply to us. All the signage and, and other things you know about, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. and the log at the door. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, the chief or Captain Cock, you know, Captain Cock is saying, well, somebody will tell you, um, you know, exactly how, how that runs. Right. If you don't already know it, we do. probably do. Do you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. So, um, all right. So this would be you would continue operating this with a two-way, the special two-way encoding. Great. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, are there any other questions for us? No, I think uh, okay. Now, one other question, I guess, your, the contingencies on this, does that have any time frame from it going to Boston and coming back to us, or is that an after? Yeah. After, after the ABCC after. approves it, okay. Just then, yeah, yeah, we can't do anything. No. You, you can't operate until they second. No, that's fine. I wasn't action. sure. I wasn't sure. If, you were waiting for that before it goes down there. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Send it to ABCC. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and then um, we will, um, you know, but if for some reason it's not, you can't operate until you get that. No, I understand. So it's just, understand. It's just out there. Gotcha. Until, until it's ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. Amusement park. Amusement park. Yeah. 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 Amusement devices? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't see that on the agenda. What are we approving? <coughs> um, I think there's two. Uh, 
Tabletop video games. Yeah, City of Northampton, on Mac amusement devices. Uh, two video games. Go ahead and make a motion up here. Video games for the uh, eleven side? Uh, one one for each. They're kind of a tabletop bar tri bar trivia touch screen things. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion for the two I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Is there anything else? Can we forget? Can we, what, what are his well drinks? Do we have to decide that? <laughs> can, can we weigh in on whether we like cover bands or not? Tito's. All right. So, I guess that's everything. Thanks for coming in. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number eight, application for short-term wine and malt liquor license, Northampton Jazz Festival, Inc., 2014 Jazz Festival, taking place on Saturday, September 6th. I saw Mr. Adams here. He seems to have left, but that's okay. Okay, Stephen Campbell. Okay, was President, President of Northampton Jazz Festival. Okay, he was just here for moral support. No, I think he had another meeting. He's moving oh, around. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I get back to you again. Stephen Campbell, President of Northampton Jazz Festival. Okay, just. I know this event happened last year. Can you tell us again what's going to happen? Uh, once again, uh, this is our fourth year. We uh, are utilizing the Hampton Avenue parking lot behind Thorns Market Marketplace. We will have a closed off uh, beer garden area, uh, along with a closed off beer uh, or closed off wine tasting area as well that happens later in the day. Uh, we're requesting a 11 a.m. to a 10 p.m. Uh, licensing uh, for the service of beer and wine. And all proceeds do go back to the festival for the festival operation. Okay. So the tent and uh, access and everything <coughs> will be the same as last year? Exactly. Uh, I went to it. And, oh, thank you. Did, did you have a by that thing? Stephen Campbell. Thank you. Okay, we have this, this site plan here. <coughs> Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Campbell? Yes, sir. There's information. I assume we have some tips training. I'm actually a certified tips uh, trainer for Sierra uh, throughout the whole region. So we will have some of my own staff from McLeod. I'm also general manager for McLeod's public, uh, public house. So I'll have some of my staff there along with some other staff that will have to ensure to be followed accordingly. So it's all McLeod's? Behind the, behind the bar? Most, it's most, mostly the plans behind the bar, or there'll be people. There's actually, we, we set up a station just uh, just inside, just on the outside edge of the beer garden, taking IDs and banding uh, proper uh, proper age. So, so there'll be, everybody will be properly trained. license of create this year incorporated the reviewers for his manager Christopher Wenz. How are you doing? <coughs> Identify yourself for the record. Uh, my name is Christopher Wenz. Uh, I've been an employee at Hugo's for the past 18 years. Uh, circumstances of the previous manager he became very ill and the owner of uh, Hugo's asked me to take over as manager, which I agreed to. So you've been working there for uh, about 18 years. I started as a doorman and uh, until recently bartender. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, and you'll be uh, overseeing the staff of Hugo. The staff. Yep. They're all trained as. They're all trained. They all just recently received their tips training. Okay. Uh, I think last month when we had the class. And uh, I see that we have all the information. 
Sure. Well, that sheet I have, I think this is, this is what we're yeah, looking for. Yeah, we've got it. Okay. Is that the court? No, it was the court. Yes, the court. I think I filled that out properly. The, uh, yeah, it was. Okay. Uh, but there's no other change in the uh, ownership problem? No, uh, no, not at all. Okay. I have no other questions. No questions. No questions? Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion then that we approve change manager to Mr. Renz for Hugo's. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Okay, item number 10, application for transfer of inhold license number 315, the salt box, 153 Elm Street. Those new owners, the Apple Elm LLC, DBA, the Elm Street Inn. Identify yourself for the record, please. Hello, I'm Catherine Burdick. Okay. And uh, I knew the previous owners pretty well, uh, well, the operators in this place. So tell us what you intend to do with this location. Pretty much continue the same business. I'm going to rent three rooms. Uh, I'll rent three rooms and offer breakfast and follow the same model that Carol has set up. Mm -hmm. okay. And, um, I do it's up down the street. It's just past Ellen Hills. Right? It's past Ellen Hills. On the right. Same side of the street. It's just past there. Before you get to the autumn end. And it's set back. It sort of goes back. There's a white building, white house next to it. Alright. Let's at least tell us where it is. Um Okay, do we need the board of health? Uh did you get your board of health permit? I or, got since you're serving breakfast. Yes, that? I got their signature today because <laughs> I had to sign up for a safe serve. Okay. Does uh, Cindy have a document, um, or do you need the document? You didn't give it to me yet. Then. Is it? No. Okay. She'll need it. She'll I, need it. Yeah, I didn't get that. Okay. And um, do we need the building commission to sign off on this for the change? I don't think we do. No. Yeah, we don't. You're not doing any major renovation for mm, it. No. Um, so we just need the, um, in order for you to serve breakfast, you'll need to think from the board of health. We can approve the inholder license. Okay, well, but I think that the paperwork is all in, so. Okay, well, contingent upon receipt of that. Uh, uh, okay. Here's our previous license. Really, we don't need the board of health. I didn't think we did, but it was on the checklist. Yeah. I think we can grant in the license. You can't serve food until that's it. We we would still want a copy for our files. So, um, <coughs> uh, I'll make a motion then, I guess we don't need to continue this uh, to approve the application for a transfer of the order license number 315. Is right? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So, uh, here, you can come get this from Cindy. Uh, just give her that thing from the Board of Health. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 11, application for short term alcohol liquor license, New England Morgan Horse Association. We've been here before. Yes, 15 years. Uh, Aaron Jolly from the Club of Amherst. Mr. Jolly, tell us what's going on. Uh, Shorten it a day this year, so we're only applying, uh, we, don't, um, we applied for Monday through Saturday on the 21st through the 26th, and uh, pretty much going to be the same kind of, same, same as it's been for the past 15 years. Okay. The show's gotten a little smaller, so 
the cup some you know used to go Saturday to Saturday, so mm -hmm. they're going to start it um, Monday evening this year. And go through Saturday. And go the following Saturday, yes. Okay. So you'll you'll be um, stopping the service of alcohol at 1 a.m. Yes. See that we have the insurance information, service information, and the fee is in place. I don't think I understand it. We're waiting for the fee. Hmm? We're waiting for the fee. We're waiting for the fee. Okay. okay. Usually I think the horse show pays that, so I'll okay. check with Mark on that. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Jolly? No. received a number of inquiries about this? Yes, we have received some already. Okay. Here. All right, that's okay. You don't need to tell us. How, how many? Just tell me. I've been like four, but six, four before I got here. Okay. All right. Let me just briefly tell you. You want to see? Can we find the first? Oh, okay. um, My thoughts briefly, this is... Um, uh, we we'll have a number of applicants, um, those who are legally qualified. Anyone, any one of the ones who are legally qualified that doesn't meet all the regulations uh, as required by the ABCC and by the city could be granted the license. We'll have a number to choose from. So we'll have a number of uh, legally qualified applicants, I assume. And how do we choose among them uh, to uh, reissue this license? Um, Bill, do you, do you know, and I, I, I really am speaking out of ignorance here, do you know if there's any possibility of us just simply doing a simple lottery? From all well, the that was what I was going to, yeah, I was going to, I was going to get to that. Okay. That was one of the things I, I thought about here. We could do a lottery, okay. Uh, doing a lottery means that we'd have a number of legally qualified applicants and that we would just pick one of them out of the hat and give it to that person. Uh, I talked to the ABCC about this process, and he said it's never heard of anybody doing that. This is Ralph Sacramento. And, um, you know, it just doesn't occur. We have the power here to grant a license to the person we think will be the most fit or uh, the most beneficial to the city. We may, in a pool, all legally qualified applicants have somebody who grew up to us alone that came before us without such a competition, you know, we would say, no, this is, you know, what you're proposing would be bad for the city, you know, you know, a gin joint sinkhole of iniquity, you know, something like that. You know, whatever. I, I'm just saying that that's a possibility. So we have control over whom we can grant the license and why would we want to give our control is basically what he said. What his, his um, recommendation was, and by the way, he, he prefaced all this with, you have to check with your city solicitor. And he ended our conversation with, you have to check with your city solicitor. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with his method of operating, which is okay. don't put anything in writing and always tell people to check with their city solicitor. Yes, yes, so am I. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, he said that again. So he said that you should probably just do what you've always done. And what that would mean for us is we wouldn't do a lottery because when people come before us, um, with a transfer of a license. In other words, a new uh, a new licensee for an all-alcohol license, or a new licensee for uh, for a license that you know doesn't yet exist, for like wine and malt, which we give out, you know, brand new. However, since we're under quota for other liquor for all-alcohol licenses, we haven't had this situation where there's been 
a vacant one has come up, it's been offered by the city for reissue to all comers. So we have all comers here, and whereas with a, our process now is to ask the people who appear before us, you know, so what do you have, what experience do you have, are any goods, everything in order here, what do you propose to do? So we're asking them as if we had the discretionary judgment to say, no, we don't think you're any good, we're not going to grant this. But we do have So that's the way we always do it now. So if we were to do a lottery, we'd be doing something different. We wouldn't be exercising discretionary judgment. How about if we if we did something that's just sort of an amalgam of the two? What if it, what if we required people who are interested to come forward and to make a presentation as to why they should be chosen, and we exercise our discretion to um, to to basically stop the application process vis-a-vis -vis anyone that we thought was a Den of iniquity or gin joint or so whatever. So throw people out of the hat. Yeah, throw people out of the hat. I, I, let me just explain why I'm concerned, and maybe it's a, a concern that's really not one that I should have. The appearance of, of uh, you know, us playing favorites. You know, there's a lot of a lot of people who would desperately like this license, and you know, um, you know, I don't have any connection. I don't even drink. You know, so I don't have any connection to. Um, but I, I do think that the appearance of, of that kind of uh, say favoritism is, is easy to, to engender. So I'd rather, if we could do it, and I'm speaking as, said, as, as a newbie and ignorant here, if we could require everybody who wanted such a license to come and make a presentation, and then us to winnow down that pool to people we felt would be good for the city, and from that pool, if there's more than one, that we um, let basically chance, mm -hmm. as opposed to dictate it. And that way, it's, it, it doesn't seem to me that, that there's an appearance that we're playing favorites or that we might know someone's friend. No, or we wouldn't pick. We wouldn't pick the one. There'd be, you know, it would be. It would be. Um, You'd be sort of like pre-qualified mortgage. Pre-qualified, but we'd have to choose one by, you know, by random. Yeah. Lot among all the all the ones that we thought not only were legally qualified, but that we thought were beneficial to the city yeah. and all that. Yes, yes, and that was the reason why I why I, I contemplated you know a lottery myself as I was thinking about this myself in our discussion because yeah, then nobody could accuse us of being a fair favoritism. But what you say has some you know you know has, has some merit certainly. Um, would the person know? Say we throw out, um, um, what was the name of the guy in It's a Wonderful Life? Mr. Potter. <laughs> so we throw out Mr. Potter's application. You know, would he have a cause of action against us? Um, you know, is. We'd have to ask our students. Yes, yes, which brings us back to that. So, yeah, the, what you say sounds, sounds reasonable to me. But I want to hear from Brian. I don't like it. Well, actually, no, I, I got to stop there right there, sorry. Yeah. We are, we do have citizens, that's our, that's our charge. Oh, that's okay. what the statute says. We, yeah, have to yeah, do yeah, we, we are. Understood. We have to take some more. God to the small G, please. Yeah. Understood. You, you are given this this awesome power, Brian. Really? To, yes. to render judgment on people no idea. by statute. Oh. So, um, well, I mean, I, I don't know, I think that you have a valid point interview people. And if they have to hurt, uh, hit a certain criteria to be even into the lottery pool, then something. Do you have any thoughts about what you'd like to see there? I don't, okay. you know, there's so many restaurant bars already. You know what I mean? So I would like to see something different. You know, how many, uh, you know, the place is flooded now anyway. Restaurant bar, restaurant bar, restaurant bar, restaurant bar. You would you would withhold issue you would think in terms of withholding issuance of license, which I don't think we have the power to do. I don't think we can hold on to license. Yeah, that's not what you're saying. No, no, it's not no, an issue of license, but just something different. I'm talking about when like, what else is there? We, we have everybody. Well, okay. I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I don't know if there's.
somebody that comes in with a creative idea, I would like to hear about that. Okay? You know what I mean? So in other words, so I don't want to name names of the restaurant and bars, but they're all so many. I would like to see somebody do something. It, it, it's only a seasonal, correct? It can be converted to annual. Okay. The special act, this, this license, this license, yeah, the, the annual fee for the seasonal is fifteen hundred and change. And upon payment, and upon payment of ten thousand dollar one time fee, it can be converted under the terms of the special act from seasonal to annual. And then they pay this annual oil call license every year that's for. Yeah. So people need to come come. We should invite so people to come. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. I was thinking that anyway, even if we had um, whatever, right. yes, I think all, all applicants should be given a chance to present what they want, and then we can, you know, you know, we could say thank you, you know, at that time it will give us an opportunity to throw out anybody we didn't want to put in the hat. And if also ask questions that, and find but, out what we're should, really about. But we should decide whether we want a hat at all. It sounds to me like, Brian, you prefer we have we do render judgment. You know, we pick one among them all. Oh, no, that's, that's fine. One. The hat is fine. You know, it just, I guess if you come to me, say the three of us went to me apply, and, and you have an idea of a plan, and I do, and you do, and they're all different, mm -hmm. but they're all viable businesses. I mean, they work, and I think if they pass whatever, or meet the laws, or, you know, so on, they go in the hat. That's the fairest thing. You know, I mean, I meant cast judgment, just because I, ah, you know, I don't want to see another little jazz thingy or whatever you said, Jim, you know, whatever. That's well, I, I talk about something bad. I understand. We don't want to see something really bad. Right, right. But assuming everybody's, yeah. yeah. Not if bad, you're, yeah. yeah, if you want to have a place and it's death metal and you're, you know, got everybody and strippers and all that. Yeah. yeah, that might be bad. That might be bad. So. Although it would be different. I practice it would be creative. Springfield for <laughs> years. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There's some, um, some things I think would not fit in, perhaps, with the Northampton milieu. May I? I agree. Well, there is a special city ordinance. You will know this yourself uh, about nudity, right? Yeah. All the entertainment in this town. Okay. So. Um, the party bra is not coming to Northampton anytime soon. So it sounds to me, and the, if you want, here, here's what I want to do after this discussion, this meeting, was then ask Alan Seawall, you know, to report this conversation to him, so you can report it to him, and then um, ask him to give us his opinion mm -hmm. of if everything we do is right. I'm liking more and more, as you said, there was, you said, yeah, it actually hadn't occurred to me to throw out, you know, any things we really think would be bad for the city. And it's put all the qualified ones, which we think would be beneficial, and have to pick one. I'm liking that. I don't know whether we can do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that you still, so if we narrow it down, say there's 15, and you narrow it down to five, I think they should go on that. All right. You know, yeah, I don't just, think that's abdicating our discretion or responsibility. I think once we've vetted carefully uh, the folks who make their presentation, mm -hmm. then we've vetted them, and if we've found some to be lacking in, in what would be good for our community, then I, I just I just assume not um, be viewed by the outside public as uh, perhaps the brand that thank God with mm -hmm. people's uh, business hopes and ventures. I, I'm liking this idea more and more. Let me um, let me bring up one more thing and then we can uh, give this to Alan. Um, unless you guys have other thoughts on this, I, I think that. I want this to be completely transparent. I don't want anybody to say that there's anything wrong we did here, anything that's done behind closed doors. We're having this discussion right now in open meeting. Uh, what I would like to do is, uh, I don't want to talk to anybody. Anybody who asks me who's put in for this license, I'm not talking to them. Sydney can tell them the, um, you know, the requirements, the legal requirements, but I want, I don't want to engage in any conversation with any potential a licensing with any applicant for this. Um, I think about, it's wise, and I think I would go one step further. I propose we consider one step further, and that is after you get the city solicitor's opinion about uh, the doability of this, that we have a half-page explanation 
of the process that we will be following that's provided to every applicant. Okay. And that way it's in writing, and, and, and I think that also keeps people, uh, it gives people a, an, an, an idea that their presentation really means something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But I would suggest that you guys both agree is that from this point forward, anybody who talks to us about it always says, yeah, talk to the, talk to the clerk and yeah. go, go to the ABCC website. Yeah, I, 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 I really kind of feel strongly about not talking to people outside of the uh, open meeting. That's not my role, yeah. I think, as a commissioner. Yeah, no, no, no. But especially in this case. Yes. Yeah, because somebody might, you know, might button on the street and say, hey. I'll say wonderful weather we're having. <laughs> Talk to Cindy. All right. Um, okay. So you're going to get our we'll just keep a list of people as I get them? Well, keep a list of expressions of interest just for your own, to keep it straight in your own head. But we will put out one of the results of the, the um, uh, opinion we get from the city solicitor will be, uh, I'm sorry, this is the other thing. Uh, and he and I already had a conversation about this. We should put something on the city website. Here is the, um, here we have, seem to have this license. You, all applicants after you know, to apply by a deadline. And uh, here's the process for applying. Okay. 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 Okay, that's okay, so, um, okay, so then what I will do is um, I'll uh, have Cindy to uh, convey this to Alan. I may have a conversation with him about it. You guys are welcome to talk to him about it too. What? I am at great confidence, Bill, that you can. But you can call him anytime you want about any of this stuff. It doesn't matter this or anything else for that matter. So, but I, but I will, I will talk to him specifically about this, and I'll say. So we need a notice to go on the website and the paper. How should it be? And um, here's, here's what we thought about for the process: uh, vetting the people and then taking the qualified applicants, you know, uh, who remain. You know, just picking. Choosing one random. Choosing one random. Is that good? You like that idea? You want to do the first guy random? Uh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, it's I a race. Like Are you one of the early worm people? <laughs> um, all right, so, all right, so that, that would be good. All right, so I'll talk about it. Again, you guys should talk to Alan um, as well. Um, what is this? Is this Can we make a motion to approve the minutes? Or? Please do. I, I think Brian needs to do it. I wasn't oh, you here. weren't here, okay. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second, all in favor? Aye. Any new business? Okay. Okay, I'll give this back to you then. I don't want to, actually, I don't even want to know who is a participant in this one. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Cindy.